Hi, welcome to this demo of IBM Spectre Protect version 813. I'll be showing you how you can now use tiered storage to balance performance and cost by creating storage rules to automatically move older data from directory container pools out to cloud container pools. Let's go ahead and press get started. You'll notice under storage, we now have a tiering rules tab. If you click on that, you will see any existing tiering rules. This is one that was already created. To create a new rule, you simply click on the plus create rule button. First, choose the Spectrum Protect server you want to define the rule for. Next, you need to pick the target storage pool, and this needs to either be an on-premise or off-premise cloud pool. And it can either be a S3 or a Azure accessible pool. So we'll go ahead and click this cloud pool. And then you'll want to click your source pool, and this should be a directory container storage pool. So we'll go ahead and click this dander pool. And then you'll go ahead and give this a name, tier to cloud. Next, you're going to change the move to data target pool. And this is going to be after how many days after initially backing up that object, you want to tier it out to the cloud storage. And so we're going to go ahead and set that at 10 days. Next, you'll choose a daily start time that you want the schedule to kick off at. And so you want to pick a time where your backups are already done and you don't have a lot else going on on the Spectrum Protect server. So we're going to go ahead and choose 1 p.m. And then you can give it a max runtime. Either say no limit, or you can choose a specific number of hours that this schedule should run on a daily basis. So we'll go ahead and take the default of four hours. And then I go ahead and click Create. OK, and now I have this new tier to cloud. If I go and I look at the tiering rules again, I can see my new tier to cloud rule. If I want to look at the details of that rule, I simply click on Details. And now I can see if any data had been moved, it would show up here. If I wanted to modify or delete this rule, I can go to Rule Properties. And I can click Modify if I choose, for instance, to increase the number of days to 14 days. And then once again, I'd click Save. Let's take a look at one of the tiering rules that's been in place for a while and has some statistics and data to show in the details. When I look at the details in Rule 1, I can see the amount of data that has been moved over two weeks. So here I can see when the schedule ran and how much data was moved. The dark blue shows the amount of data that is eligible to be moved, and the light blue shows the amount of data that was actually moved for that day. Likewise, I can see the speed over the last two weeks for the movement. Now, a couple of things I want to clarify on this cloud tiering is, first of all, the data can be sent to either on-premise or off-premise clouds that are either type S3 or Azure. Secondly, the cloud pool does not require a hybrid cache if it's only being used for tiering. So if you set up a cloud pool only to tier two, you do not have to set up a directory cache associated with that. If you're also backing up or archiving directly to that cloud pool, then you will still need the cache. When you define the cloud pool, you'll see a new option for either setting up a cache or not setting up a cache. All of the extents that are required to rebuild the objects will be copied to the tier if they're not already there. And a copy of those deduplicated extents will remain in the original container until there are no other references to it in that primary container. And then finally, if the data is compressed and or encrypted in the directory container, then it's going to be moved in that format regardless if compression or encryption is set on the container that we're tiering to. One other thing to be aware of, if you are planning on tiering out data that has objects that are grouped together, and this would be things like your Windows system state backups, or your Spectrum Protect for database, or Spectrum Protect for mail backups, or Spectrum Protect for ERP, then you do need to realize that we will treat the groups as one object 
So the decision of whether to tier an object to cloud is dependent on the eligibility of the oldest object in that group. And typically that'll be your full backup. So for instance, if we had this Oracle backup that's doing its full plus differentials and we have our tier delay set to four days, then day one we'd get our full backup of the Oracle. Day two would be a differential. Day three would be a differential. On day four, we would take a differential and we would tier both the full plus day two, day three, and day four's differential out to the cloud. On day five, when we did a differential, that day five differential would be tiered to the cloud on that same day. Same with day six. Now on day seven, when we redid that full backup, we wouldn't tier that out immediately until four days later. So just be aware that if you do have backups that have objects that are grouped together, for instance, fulls plus differentials or fulls plus incrementals, be aware of how this impacts the tiering. So in summary, the new tiering to cloud feature in version 8.1.3 allows you to exert greater control over where data is stored so you can better balance the performance and cost benefits of different tiers of storage. So now any of the client data, whether it's backup, archive, space management, database backups, VMware backups, that's stored inside of a directory container can be tiered after a specific amount of time out to a cloud container that's either S3 or Azure. So this kind of separates operational versus long-term data and even helps with things like compliance where you might have different retention needs and find that the cloud is a really good fit for long-term storage requirements. When it comes to restore, the data will be restored from wherever it sits, whether that's on a directory container or on a cloud. And to the end user, it's seamless. They don't see the difference and the Spectrum Protect server itself will take care of bringing back the data to the Spectrum Protect client. Thank you very much.